What comes to mind when you think of a supernova? You probably think of a massively destructive cosmic event, a star exploding in magnificent fashion and annihilating everything unfortunate enough to lie in its path. While this isn't exactly wrong, it may not be the whole picture. What if we told you that supernovae help to create as much of our universe as they destroy, or that our very existence may be thanks in large part to a supernova? A new discovery in astrophysics may mean just that. Today we are going to talk about research that may have just changed our fundamental understanding of the way stars are formed and galaxies are shaped. A supernova is somewhat loosely defined as a celestial phenomenon wherein a star explodes possibly by way of a gravitational collapse, which results in a sudden and massively increased luminosity by an object which emits an enormous amount of energy and sometimes leaves behind an extremely dense core. This transient astronomical event can last anywhere from milliseconds to days, weeks, months, and even several years. Like any star, supernovae can vary widely in terms of size, energy, and observable luminosity depending on many factors. There are numerous statements made from the scientific community on exactly how much energy is emitted from various supernovae. For some reference on just how spectacular these events can be, in June of 2015, astronomers from Ohio State University discovered a supernova using the All Sky Automated Survey for Supernovae, dubbed SN2015L. SN2015L was reportedly over 500 billion times brighter than our Sun and 20 times brighter than all of the combined light emitted by the Milky Way galaxy. The largest supernova observed to date was named SN2016 APS, with its estimated mass being between 50 and 100 times that of our Sun. But how could such massive objects, which release so much energy, actually form anything, rather than simply crushing everything in their wake? We know that when a star collapses, resulting in a supernova, it creates new elements depending on the type of supernova that occurred. The products of a supernova can be oxygen, helium, nickel, iron, and many more. But how do these elements come together to form new stars and even planets? Well, a new discovery using 3D mapping of galactic dust may help explain just that. Stars form within molecular clouds with dense concentrations of gas and dust. These clouds are extremely cold, so cold that the gases become molecular, hence molecular clouds. This means their atoms bind together. The most common molecules in these interstellar gas clouds are carbon and hydrogen. When the cold causes these molecules to bind at high enough densities, the cloud cores collapse under their own gravity and form stars. Because these regions are so dense with gases, they are opaque to visible light and are referred to as dark nebulas, which means scientists use infrared and radio telescopes to study them. Perseus and Taurus are two molecular clouds filled with gas where stars form with the Taurus formation being the closest currently known star formation region to Earth, at about 430 light years away, and the Perseus formation being around 1000 light years away. It has long been speculated that the two clouds were located near to one another. When looking at them two dimensionally, they even appear to touch, because of the forced perspective from the Earth. But this new data from Gaia, a space telescope launched by the European Space Agency, helped create a 3D map of the clouds that suggests the existence of a massive, spherical-shaped void between the clouds that extends some 500 light-years. This new 3D data allowed scientists to see more accurately the relationship between Perseus and Taurus. Dr. Shmuel Bialy, an astrophysicist for the Harvard and Smithsonian Center of Astrophysics, has been mapping out these clouds for years. He believes that this giant void discovered between the star-forming cloud regions is the result of a supernova that occurred over 10 million years ago, and that this discovery is the first data of its kind that goes to show astronomers exactly how a supernova can, in time, result in the formation of stars. It was odd, to say the least, for astronomers to find such a large, empty region of space given that most of space is abundant with stars, dust, gas, and rocky objects. Bialy says that this cavity must be the aftermath of a very powerful event which cleared out the area of 500 light years. The data also shows that Perseus and Taurus are not actually two separate clouds, but rather that they both formed from one event, and that event being the supernova of a star. Remember, a supernova is the result of a star collapsing under the weight of its own gravity, which results in the explosion we call a supernova. 
This new data suggests that the explosion of a star sends the material that comprised the star bursting outward, and whatever is left behind creates clouds of dust and gas like Perseus and Taurus. Over time, that material will eventually compress to form new stars born from the aftermath of a supernova. This process has long been theorised, but this is the first time it has been observed happening in space. Essentially, we've known about the existence of these clouds and that they do in fact form stars. But how the clouds came to be in the first place was only theorised until this observation. According to Dr. Bayali, hundreds of stars are either forming or already exist on the surface of this vast void. He says there are two theories as to how the Perseus-Taurus supershell was formed. The first is that a singular supernova occurred in the centre of this void and pushed the gases outward. The second theory is that a series of supernovae occurred over millions of years and eventually formed this sort of vacuum in space surrounded by the gas and dust clouds referred to as the Perseus-Taurus supershell. In either case, scientists' theories that star-forming gas clouds are ultimately the result of supernova events have seemingly been proven. Though the Perseus-Taurus supershell is the only currently observed instance of this void in space, these are not the only star-forming regions in space, let alone in our local group, which consists of two collections of galaxies that include our Milky Way galaxy, some of these other star-forming regions include the Orion Nebula, Westerhout 40, Omega Nebula, the Eagle Nebula, among others. The most recent known supernova to have occurred in our Milky Way galaxy is referred to as Cassiopeia A. It's estimated that the light from this supernova first became visible to Earth in the late 17th century. The supernova happened about 11,000 light years away from Earth, and the cloud of material that remains can be observed in the form of visible light from Earth with amateur telescopes and spans approximately 10 light years across space from our perspective. Near-Earth supernovae are defined as a supernova which occurs in close enough proximity to Earth to have notable effects on Earth's biosphere, which is thought to be about 30 to 1,000 light years away from Earth. It is estimated that 20 supernova explosions have occurred within 1,000 light years of Earth over the last 11 million years and have been associated with the global warming effects here on Earth of 3 to 4 degrees Celsius. On average, a supernova occurs within just over 30 light years of Earth, once every 240 million years. Its global warming effects are mostly the effect of gamma rays, also known as gamma radiation, which is an electromagnetic radiation that comes from the decay of atomic nuclei. With this context, the thought of a near-Earth supernova occurring during your lifetime can be absolutely terrifying. But unless you plan on living millions of years, you've probably got nothing to worry about. On the contrary, in light of this new discovery, we should probably be glad that supernovas exist in the first place. Without them, we wouldn't have the molecular clouds of gas, which eventually form the stars and planets that make up galaxies, including our own Milky Way galaxy. So in a way, our very existence is in part thanks to supernovae. With well over a trillion stars spanning 10 million light years across the local group, as well as dozens of discovered galaxies, it becomes apparent that it all must have been the result of many supernovae, and an enormous amount of time to form these celestial objects. Scientists believe that this is indeed how Earth came to be. Approximately 4.6 billion years ago, our solar system was nothing but a cloud of dust and gas, which we can now assume was the result of a supernova. Over time, the weight of its gravity caused the material to collapse in on itself, forming our Sun in the centre. The leftover material began to bind as small particles drew together under the force of gravity and formed larger particles. Lighter elements such as hydrogen and helium were swept away by solar winds, while heavier rocky materials were left behind to form relatively small terrestrial planets, like Earth. Further from the core, solar winds didn't have the same impact on lighter elements, which allowed these light elements to form gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn called gas giants because they are mostly comprised of gases surrounding a solid core. In Earth's case, its rocky core was first formed by the heavier elements binding together, while the lighter elements collected around the more dense core to form its crust and gases that make up our protective atmosphere were captured by Earth's gravity. Early in Earth's history, it thankfully suffered a number of collisions, at least one of which sent pieces of our young planet's mantle flying outward. These pieces of Earth would eventually bind together by the force of gravity to form our Moon, which then began to orbit Earth. A number of other collisions with Earth from frozen masses of dust and gas would deposit much of Earth's surface water. Being that the Earth, thankfully, lies in the Goldilocks zone, our water neither freezes nor evaporates. This led to the possibility of the development of life. 
and we now know that none of it would have been possible if it hadn't have been for a star collapsing in on itself, causing a supernova billions of years ago. While many aspects of the relationship between star formation, supernovae, and molecular clouds are still hotly debated within the scientific community, and there is still so much to learn, this new data from Gaia that helped create the 3D maps of molecular clouds which allowed scientists to discover the huge void in space between Perseus and Taurus has aided spectacularly in expanding our understanding of the process. In time, it's possible we'll discover more of these voids, and who knows, maybe on the surface of another void will lie a star like our sun, which may have some similarly terrestrial planet in its Goldilocks zone where life can exist. I certainly hope so, and if such a discovery ever comes, we'll have a supernova to thank for it. Thanks for joining us this week in Access Astronomy. We hope to see you here next week, where we will explore more of our vast universe.